did you know RHCL stands for Red Hat Enterprise Linux? I would hope so. You've been watching these videos for a couple months or nine chapters, whichever is longer to you. The E in RHEL stands for Enterprise, otherwise known as Enterprise Support. That's right, you get to call the guys who made the operating system and ask them why your shit is not working. How much would you pay for that? I hope a lot, because they charge a lot. At least to Mr. Low Specs, very thin pockets. But I'm only one man. And generally, if you're an IT guy and you're reaching out to Red Hat or you're rolling out Red Hat distros, you're one guy representing an entire organization, which means your pockets are deep because they're not your pockets. They're the company's pockets, which means the money might as well be free. I kid. To any future employers listening, I will definitely not be using your IT budget to build my own private playground. And I assure you, your other senior IT personnel are not doing that either. So how does one go about getting support for RHEL? Well, there's two things you're going to have to do. Those two things are, one, you're going to have to register your distro to Red Hat, and two, you're going to have to open your pocketbooks and give them lots of money. What are the four steps to register an RATL based system? The first is you actually have to go to the first is that you actually have to go to the Red Hat site and register an account. The second, after your account is registered, you have to subscribe. So on your Red Hat system, there's actually some commands you can use to subscribe to a Red Hat license or entitlement. Once you're subscribed, you're then going to have to enable the private subscription repos. This is another part of the process we're going to go over. And then the last step is you would actually go back to the Red Hat site and review and track your current subscriptions. So it's a very simple process. Yes, a very simple process that we'll go over in the next video. Because while it's simple, it's going to take us about 5 to 10 minutes. So let's cut this video down because I lost your attention span a minute and 55 seconds ago. Now let's get started. Last time we left off talking about entitlements or the Red Hat equivalent to Microsoft licensing. And guess what? Even though Red Hat is Linux based, they're still an enterprise, which means registering with them is just as much as a pain in the ass as it is to register Microsoft licenses. First things first, go to Google and Google search register at Red Hat. The second link you find that says create a Red Hat login is the one you're looking for. It's already purple on my end because I've already clicked it. And there we go. Now, it's going to ask if you want to create a corporate or a personal account. For the purposes of this video, we're going to create a personal account. So I'm going to go ahead and fill out this form. I'm assuming you know how to fill out a form, so I'm not going to record that part. I also don't want you to have my information. Sneaky sneakies. But after I've done this and uh, completed this step, we'll continue from there. After you register, you'll then be prompted with this, a verification email. Go ahead and click the link to verify your email. So I changed the format to make things a little bit easier on your eyes. Once you're all nice and registered, you can go ahead and click the Red Hat customer portal. And then from there, click Red Hat developer. We'll let that load. And then after we load, we'll go to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And then you're gonna wanna download Red Hat, right? Of course, it's gonna prompt you to log in again. We're gonna do that off screen. And then after you log in and register, you'll see the prompt to download RHEL at no cost. So notice how we had to sign in and register and then sign in again just to get access to this. Once you've downloaded RHEL, you're then going to want to install it. I'm not actually going to go through a video of this. Past me is though. So let's hand this over the past, Steven. But we're back and I now have a new VM spun up on VM 1100. RHCSA Lab 1. So this is on Linux. We're going to go ahead and walk through the installation process. So first thing first, we select our language, hit continue, set your default keyboard, set your installation source, select your software selection. So basically this tells you what different packages you want installed. And we want server with G GUI installed. We definitely want guest agents installed. Let's see what other things do we want okay let's see system tools we'll want those installed and then we hit done after that we then have to select our installation destination so we're going to choose default we're going to go ahead and click done 
after that we're going to choose our default password going to go ahead and click done after that we'll have to create a user i'll go ahead and make this user an administrator and we're going to set our password for that user we're creating we hit done we've got to go back to our installation destination there we go and from there we can begin installation and we just go ahead and we let it do its thing so we'll come back when it's completed so the system install is done it's booting up now and we are done boys we now have rhcl installed so that install process should be the same for all my linux centos rhcl basically all those family of distros share the same installer so if you know how to do it on one you know how to do it on many so at this point we have now finished installing rhcl let's go ahead and get it registered this is the easy part of this entire video boys First things first, in order to do this, you're going to need Subscription Manager installed. On Alma Linux, to get it installed, I had to do a yum install Subscription Manager. This command right here. Once this command is done running, you'll then be able to run Subscription Manager, register, and then from register, we'll do the rest of this. Task task username, and then you enter the username you use to create your account. In my case, I'm going to enter my email, and then you enter the password. And we let that run for a few seconds. All right, cool. And then it gave us a little warning about default behaviors. Uh, we're not gonna worry about that right now. That's not the purpose of this video. Now that your system is fully registered, you'll then wanna go to access.redhat.com forward slash management. Once you get there, you'll see this page right here where you can manage your Red Hat subscriptions. If I had active Red Hat subscriptions I wanted to manage, I would come to this page and once I'm on this page, I would go to view all systems. After you click view all systems, you'll get a list of all the Red Hat servers you have registered. Why would you want to register it? Because when you register a server, it provides you a convenient way to manage them, to also view system and status information about them. And then of course, if you're paying Red Hat fat stacks of money, you can also call them and ask for help, which is very useful especially if you don't want to spend a couple months reading a thick ass textbook and trying to burn the knowledge into your brain because almond linux is open source it doesn't come with all the necessary tools you would need to pull full system information but it does come with some for instance if we were to click system facts we'd be able to get some basic cpu info about our server we'd also be able to get information about installed packages but almond linux doesn't have the again right pa right tools installed same thing for enabled modules. These would be your enabled kernel modules. Alma Linux does not have the right packages installed to pull that. Error data, you'd be theoretically be able to look at error logs. Again, nothing we really see here. So thank you for watching and tune in the next time where we dive deeper into chapter nine. This is, a, again, new stuff. So it's going to take a little while for the videos to come out.